Dear Gregory, I'm contacting you on behalf of TEDx Bucharest team because we would like to invite you to submit an ID proposal in order to be a speaker at our anniversary 10th edition. Man, I was so excited. I'm going to share with you what nobody tells you about being a TEDx speaker and host. Hello Brain Lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. Now, thank you for all the birthday wishes last week. That was so sweet. Now, this week, I have something really special for you. I want to talk to you about my experience at TEDx, how it is to actually give a TED talk. Okay, so if you don't know what a TED conference is, you must have been living under a rock somewhere these last 10 years. TED stands for Technology, Education and Design. The slogan is IDs worth spreading and they have a very specific format. Every speaker has 18 minutes on stage to speak in front of a live audience. Everything is recorded and uploaded on their websites and you can find them on YouTube as well. And we, the public, we can see these IDs worth spreading for free. TED Talks are truly awesome. Now, for those of you who are members of the Brain Academy, you know how much I love TED Talks, right? In the Academy, I made a personal selection of what I consider the best talks regarding brain science. TED Talks are organized in the US. However, now we also have TEDx. The X in TEDx stands for independently organized. So it's basically a franchisee and uh, these uh, TEDx conferences are organized all over the world. It's been a dream of mine, you know, professionally speaking, to be on a TED stage. You know the thing, right? One day I'll stand on a TED stage and then you immediately realize that that's not the most realistic ambition you might have. Well, I started the Brain Academy back in 2014, making my courses, doing my research, creating content. In July 2016, I hit a milestone when I released my course on neuroplasticity. Now. You have to know, back then, <laughs> I was the very first to create a course online on neuroplasticity. Nowhere on the net could you find that. By now, well, I've been copied a zillion times and everyone speaks about neuroplasticity. But then, five years ago, I was the first. And to this day, it is still one of my best-selling courses. Apparently, that course drew quite some attention because in January 2018, I received an email. Dear Gregory, I'm contacting you on behalf of TEDx Bucharest team because we would like to invite you to submit an ID proposal in order to be a speaker at our anniversary 10th edition with the team crossing boundaries. Yada, 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 yada. The mail goes on talking about my work on neuroplasticity and how they would be interested to hear some ideas about that topic. And I was so excited. I, I didn't know yet they would pay for my flight and hotel. So I started looking online how much that would cost me because I was totally okay to pay for it, you know? Because, come on, this was TEDx, right? Anyway, long story short, we did the preparation, uh, the um, fine-tuned my talk, November came and I took my flight to Bucharest. Now, I have to say, I can't speak for other TED organizers, of course, but the one in Bucharest, oh my God, these guys know how to throw an event. Very professional, very well organized, but above all, very friendly, you know? They made me feel like a VIP. The limo was waiting for me at the airport. The place of the event was beautiful. Everyone was so thoughtful. The rehearsal went good. The other speakers, oh, these other speakers who were absolutely amazing, brilliant, beautiful people from all over the world, by the way. People flew in from the US, Canada, Israel, UK, Amsterdam, Brussels. Oh, that was me. Then the moment came that uh, I had to go on stage and is the most complex biological structure in the known universe. Take care of your brain and it will take care of you. It was amazing. It was pure bliss. I loved every single second of it. It was even better than what I had imagined it would be. At least for me it was. And if you want to check it out for yourself, well, I'll put a link in the description. Now, there's one thing nobody tells you about TED Talks. Sure, whatever happens on stage is great and really fantastic. There are amazing people with amazing stories, but that's only half the story. What happens backstage is just crazy. All those people, beautiful minds, having these great conversations. 
we truly felt that together we had enough mind power and networking power to literally change the world. You would have thrown us any problem, any challenge, we would have been able to solve it. Because of the different angles, each one of us was able to look at any topic. We were able to lift any conversation to amazing heights. Now, these three days at Bucharest were, to me, the most inspiring event in my professional life, ever. I was just blown away. So I went home feeling so inspired. I had lived that dream of mine to be on stage of a TED event, and that was it. Or so I thought. Now, TEDx Bucharest has this charming tradition where they ask one of the speakers to come back the next year to be the host of the next event. And honestly, I swear I never even crossed my mind they would ask me. So when I received their mail asking me to be the MC for the 2019 event, I was confused. I didn't know how to react. I was afraid. I mean, it's one thing to be on stage for 18 minutes, having prepared and rehearsed your speech for months in advance. It's another thing altogether to host such an event for two days straight. So I hesitated a lot. I had a lot of doubts. I wasn't sure I would be able to pull it off. But then I realized, just like I teach in my courses and conferences, that we regularly need to go out of our comfort zone. Well, this time it was my turn to do so. And so I said yes without fully realizing what I signed up for. The only thing I knew is that I would give it everything I got. Zero experience in hosting, sure, but my enthusiasm and dedication would make up for that. So November came and again I flew to Bucharest, but this time I wasn't a speaker. I was part of the organization. I saw the other side of the curtain. The stress, the, the last minute problems, logistical stuff, Murphy's Law in all its glory. And I started one huge roller coaster of emotions that would last for three most intense days. Now, from the very first moment, I loved the stage. I was quite nervous, of course, but the Bucharest public is very warm and plays along well. We hit it off immediately. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's such a blast to be back. Yes, I was here last year. Yes, I had the time of my life. I loved it. And yeah, you got some more of me now this year. I worked so hard. My gosh, nobody tells you that. But being an MC is just tough. You just see the tip of the iceberg where the host is just a couple of minutes on stage between speakers. But there is a relentless preparation behind every single intervention. I spoke to every speaker, prepared the text, the transition from one to the other. From mountain climbers to culinary artists over artificial intelligence, micro expressions and, and social media. It seems nothing, but it's hours and hours of work. Oh, they're going to be way more than that. But if that wasn't enough, we also have amazing artists and performers. Then there's the, the little jokes I crack as well. When I was like 15, 16 years old, people ask you, well, what do you want to do when you're an adult? For me, I had it all figured out. I knew exactly what I wanted to be. Rock star. <laughs> I tried to add some neuroscience, fun and facts here and there. If you would put two brains uh, on a table, uh, one male, one female, and, and you invite five neuroscientists coming up here and going like, yeah, tell me which one is male, which one is female. There's absolutely no way for them to know which one is male, which one is female. But everything was so raw and intense. We were behind that curtain, timing every intervention, staying alert. But the other thing is, you're so close to the action, so close to the speakers, you, you feel the tension, it's there, you can almost touch it, you know? Then there was this one speaker. He went off stage and I went up. But his talk was so powerful. The audience just continued clapping and clapping. So I called him back up. This is your moment. He got this huge standing ovation and I was standing right next to him. And I received all this energy. It was overwhelming. I had goosebumps all over my body. Or this woman, an amazing New York dancer. She was dancing on stage and I was so profoundly moved by her performance. Or this young girl, only 16 years old, talking about empowering girls in such a mature and nuanced way. I was blown away. The first day was a blast. Everything went great. We followed the scripts. We were professional. We had everything under control. And then came day two. I have to understand, I'm someone who prepares a lot. I over-prepare. I feel I owe it to the audience. Oh boy, well, 
that second day didn't go as planned at all. Uh, I forgot my backpack with all my notes and all the preparation for today. Uh, I got to win some time. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> and now, <clears throat> the end is near. And so I face my final curtain. Or that time where I had this major slip of the tongue, but I owned it. In my head it went like, don't say Budapest, don't say Budapest, don't say Budapest. And then I opened my mouth and apparently I said Budapest because uh, this person said like, really Budapest? And then we had the technical thing happening. Or should I say not happening, as it wasn't working. It was supposed to be a live interactive performance inspired by the Netflix uh, Black Mirror Bandersnatch episode. Yeah? The idea was good actually, but the setup went wrong, terribly wrong. And the whole thing just wasn't working. So we were backstage and nothing was working or freaking out. The, uh, the technicians were trying to figure out what was happening. Every second felt like um, an hour and every minute felt like an eternity. So then I, I went, well, let me go on stage. They went, uh, what are you gonna say? And I said, I don't know. We just need to buy some time, right? So let me go up there. First they said no. Then a couple of minutes later, they said yes. We have some slight technological glitches that will be ready in a couple of seconds. So right now I was thinking about doing my Hamlet uh, reproduction. Uh. Now for the first time in two days, I walked on stage without having prepared a thing. And I didn't know what I would say. A thousand people staring at me and I just improvised. And this guy is fantastic. He's working really hard, I believe. <laughs> I don't see any sweat yet. It might happen. So let's just, as if he wasn't there, right? You just try to ignore him. It's like the elephant in the room. You don't talk about it, but it's there. So damn, what am I gonna do now? A brain joke. Oh yeah, I've got a great brain joke for you guys. Um... And everyone was so supportive during the breaks. People would come up to me thanking me and taking selfies <laughs> and congratulating me. The Romanian public is just awesome, seriously. I told you this was a roller coaster of emotions. At the end of the second day, when it was time for me to say goodbye, well, I just lost it. I have never ever shed a tear on stage until then. And it's been a pleasure, an honor, and oh my God, I'm getting emotional. It was great. But imagine this, I was supposed to introduce the licensee of the event, Andre, and when I walked off stage, I saw him there and I went, damn, I totally forgot to announce you. So I just turned around and went back on stage, still with tears in my eyes and laughing at my own forgetfulness. That was epic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I forgot like a, uh, something important here. Now to present the final act of the day, right? <laughs> well, after that weekend, I needed a full week to process everything, all these emotions. It was so intense, so intense. Giving a TEDx was everything and more than I could have hoped for. But hosting a TEDx, oh gee, that was totally next level. I loved it, profoundly loved it. It was transformative, it woke something up in me, something I had forgotten existed. You see, I remember when I was a kid, I was often on stage with school and stuff and I really enjoyed it. I mean, I really loved it. Later, I played guitar and organized some concerts. Remember the rock star thing I told in my intro? Well, that was actually true. I didn't make that up. But somehow, I never did anything with that and I just forgot about it. Now, ironically, I talk about this in my courses. These are primary motivations, things that can lay dormant for years. And if we don't do a thing with them, it's not bad. It's just wasting a huge source of profound joy. So much potential just laying there. The TEDx 2019 theme was metamorphosis. Basically, a change, an adaptation where you transcend your current state and enter a new one. And that's one more thing that TEDx did to me. It finally convinced me to go back into the outside world, leave the safe environment of my recording studio and take more risks. And I'm nothing but grateful for all of it.
Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have new episodes of this vlog coming out every week. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want the real stuff, go to brainacademy.com. Join our 200,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.